The new governor followed through on a campaign promise on her third day on the job, in fact. She put pen to paper on an executive order officially doing away with the controversial park test as the state's primary education measurement tool. Here with us today to talk about that and more, as well as some of her most recent appointments, that'll be good, is a panel of familiar faces, three of our line regulars, starting with PR guru Tom Garrity of the Garrity Group PR. <laughs> Daniel Foley's here, ready to take on 2019. He's a former state minority whip. Sophie Martin is back. She's a regular and an attorney here in town. Plus, I guess we are always glad to have at our table Christine Sierra. She is retired, but still very active UNM political poli sci professor. Good to see you. Good to see matter of fact, you. Welcome to you all. Daniel, start with you. Were you surprised by that executive order? Not the timing necessarily, uh, excuse, not, the, not the order itself, but the timing. No. Was there a message there she was trying to send? No, I mean, it's, it's been clear with whether you're talking about Donald Trump, Michelle Lujan Grisham, they make these big campaign promises. The minute they get the pen, they, you know, they're gonna tell you, this is what I'm doing. Right. You know, the interesting thing was, the minute it came out, my daughter, who's a senior in high school, sent me a text with that message that says, why didn't she get elected sooner? <laughs> um, so, you know, I think I've lost any chance of raising a young conservative daughter who She's apparently cards, seems to man. be a big <laughs> Michelle Lujan Grisham fan. Um, no, it's no it's no shock. I mean, I don't know anybody that said the testing was working. Okay. I don't know anybody who said they were in favor of it. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I think the argument was... Well, there are a few, in fairness. There are. I don't think there was anybody. I mean, other okay. than the people who were involved in the testing, like at the cabinet level position. I don't know any school official, superintendent, school board member, right. parent, student that said park testing is great. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with it. I think overwhelmingly it may be the only thing everybody except a few very you know small number of folks directly involved agreed with. But mm -hmm. it does not surprise me the timing. Um, mm -hmm. I do hope that there's going to be something to replace it. I'm not right. saying it has to be that sort of testing. Gotcha. But you know it's clear that we're not doing the right job educating and there, the kids. And there ahead, will be, if, mm -hmm. I, if I can jump in, Please. two things. Mm -hmm. The first is, viewers should not think that with you know a wave of her wand, it's gone forever. It, it's gonna finish, they're gonna have to finish out By this school year. By the way, it didn't year. work very much. I mean, no, my, I daughter, think, my kids yeah. are telling me that yeah. like half the time, they like had to rear retest, Rancho, yeah. they had to retest, and they had to That's put right. these kids in shifts because they didn't have enough computers. So you go, right. kids That's have right. missed three days of school while half the school took the test. So the expectation is yep. there will still be park testing through the end of the school year, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but it, this signals um, a move on the administration's, but the new governor's administration's part to look for different alternatives, mm -hmm. um, and there's an obligation to do so. Federal education law requires that they be benchmarking, testing, right. et cetera. It doesn't have to be the park test, though, gotcha. and so, gotcha. so um, the lieutenant governor has been placed temporarily in charge of, mm -hmm. of um, the education department and is going to be, from what we hear, involved in looking at those alternatives to mm -hmm. try and find something different. So please don't walk away thinking my child doesn't have any park testing for the rest of his or her <laughs> life or that there won't be testing of some sort in right. future years. And probably, what we're hearing, probably there will still be an element of that testing coming into teacher evaluations. Mm -hmm. But I suspect it's not going to be as big a component of the teacher evaluation as, it, as has been in the past. It's also worth noting mm -hmm. that the state legislature needs to pass a little bit of legislation because there, there is a legislative element to the, to the old park Texas That's right, regime. good point there. Regime, yeah. One of the things I hear, Tom, though, uh, folks are concerned with losing what's longitudinal information, like long-term said, where are we, rising and falling every year? There's gotta be a way that we have to track these kind of things. Mm -hmm. and in fact, when you think about it, that Yazzie Martinez decision, that, that word, that term was used in that as well, that they're gonna have to start some system to be able to track these things. Are we losing something by losing park in, in that regard? We're losing information, right. yeah. I mean, you know, whenever you change systems, of which New Mexico has changed systems about as often as uh, APS changes superintendents True. or other major mm -hmm. school districts and stuff, you lose that institutional knowledge of mm -hmm. saying, okay, we have that, uh, that cohort. Uh, that is consistent across many different years to really track the data. Whether the data is, you know, people say it's accurate or not accurate or it's, it's slanted right. one way or another, you it's data and you lose it and you lose that opportunity. So that's, you know, I, me, I'm not necessarily sold one way or another, but it's, a, it's, it's information that we now will have to rebuild and start that uh, cohort new. Good point there. You know, and Christine, when you think about it, um, we don't have a Secretary of Education yet that has not been named, and as mentioned, Lieutenant Governor Morales is going to be assuming that role. Something seems a little interesting there, though, an opportunity for the Lieutenant Governor to be a little more active in something, perhaps even after this person to head that department is hired. I'm, I'm curious what, what the Governor is going for there. It's interesting. Well, I think it's a good 
at least interim yeah. uh, holding, p p putting that uh, position, uh, uh, enacting it with a, leg with a legislator, former legislator, mm -hmm. who is from the realm of public That's education. Right. He's an educator. So yeah. uh, I think the fact that he's an educator is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the the appointment of the secretary of the PED is mm -hmm. going to be really, really important. Right. And 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 what does the governor have to watch out there with this next appointment? Is there anything she should be aiming for? Is it youth? Is it out of state? That's always a big one. We're going to talk about that with some of the appointments here in a minute. But you see what I mean? There's a lot. Think, it's a tricky appointment. This one. I think that. The resistance to Hannah Scandera and uh, the, there were multiple levels. I think to show that it is a person who is an expert in the field. Mm -hmm. A lot of people sometimes think, well, I went to school. I'm an expert on education, right. you know. <laughs> but really, a professional uh, expert in the field, someone who wants to engage in a broad conversation and generate participation from lots of different stakeholders. Right. I think it's perhaps the attitude that will be reflected in gotcha. the person chosen, plus the abilities that they bring to the I think it's more. Yeah. I think the most important issue she's got to do is find someone who's going to advance her agenda. Okay. Her, she has an agenda. She ran on an agenda. The last thing you need coming into education is having someone that has a different agenda or has a different way of implementing your agenda. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons this is taking a while is because I think she's smart enough to know that this this is one of the few cabinet level appointments that there's going to be a lot of eyes on. And if there's any hiccup, if there's any uh, any opportunity they're not singing from the same sheet of music could cause an unbelievable amount of problems. Mm -hmm. She's got to work with the she's got to work with the unions. Um, the unions can be yep. a little demanding yep. when it comes to education. Um, the unions have really posed a problem for legislators and governors of both parties because they're pretty demanding and lots of times when their demands, when they start rolling, the public starts saying, yeah, I'm not down with all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so she's got to find that person that can handle working with the unions, balance working with the teachers, deliver the, the policies and procedures that she wants to implement in public education. And this is something that she's been involved in since she was, you know, a secretary for That's years right. prior. That's this right. is no new. It was a big part yeah, of her, her, her inaugular know, address, though. Uh, yeah. Just to That's kind right. of play off of what has been mm -hmm. talked about is her use of Howie Morales. Yes. Um, you know, yeah. by her engaging him at this early stage shows that, you know, she's looking at him as a utility infielder. Gotcha. And I think that's a great play for, you know, the Lujan Grisham administration because they're not going to be, you know, pigeonholed to say, oh, wait, who's the lieutenant governor? That's right. uh, that's you know, right. front and center. So I think that's a good we've, one. We've actually talked for a long time right. about how the lieutenant governor position is kind of a dead end. Like, right. they, yeah. they do the job and then they sort of disappear. It would be a waste right? to waste his background it in would education. Be a waste. It right. would be a waste, mm -hmm. but it's also, from a, from a Democratic Party perspective or a political party perspective, it would be a waste not to put him in a position where he could move on to other to other uh, positions because he, right. you know, he, you don't he's just young. want it to be. He's That's young. Right. You That's don't right. want it to just be like, thanks for playing. That's right. You know. You, That's right. You, you know, want to build states, your bench. Governor, in the other states, the lieutenant governor actually has a has a job. Like That's right. In some well, states, Colorado, in Texas. Right. One of them in Texas. They te say that it's more powerful. Is more powerful. Yeah. Well, it, like, but, but I mean, they have an, like I think in Colorado, the lieutenant governor officially is the head of the economic development department. Mm. I mean, there's 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 positions, um, I think it's a great opportunity. You know, you got a lieutenant governor that's going to live in Santa Fe, mm -hmm. that's up there all the time, that's been a teacher, been in the classroom. You know, instead of sitting around and shaking hands and waiting for the governor to leave, like it, you know, it seems like the only go role the, gov yeah, the only role the, the gov lieutenant governor had was to preside over the Senate right. and then wait for the governor to go somewhere because then they could sign something. That's right. Putting, putting let me, him in let me charges get to a, would be a great opportunity. I hear that point. Let me get to a couple of things. Christine, I'll start with you. Um, this idea that uh, Governor Lujan Grisham is going to have a co-branch <coughs> of her running things. Uh, John Bingaman, the son of Jeff Bingaman, is going to be, and uh, the woman from Santa Fe, Teresa Casados, is going to be sort of a co-team there. In uh, some situations that works, you've got that you know, CEO and you've got this C-level folks right underneath, but in politics it's a little bit different. Is that, it, it, what's your sense of how that would work, splitting those duties like that? Well, we've seen uh, at different levels, uh, different areas of state government and local government, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, an ambitious mayor may have to deal with a, ca uh, a city manager right. or it's the administrative state that, but again, it goes, bottom line is, uh, Luhan Grisham uh, is going to be giving the directives. And so I think mm -hmm. having 
competent people, mm -hmm. uh, forceful people, to implement that agenda, I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not, uh, I, I think that's a little bit walking within the, the weeds of trying to figure out uh, mm -hmm. how her uh, managerial style will work right. with these people. I think it's a smart right. move okay. what she's doing this. Mm -hmm. um, okay. There's no doubt that she's a progressive Democrat. There, she's campaigned on progressive issues. She's, you know, there's no lack of, you know, I mean, I don't think anybody at this table would say she's center right, center left. I mean, she's mm -hmm. left. She's mm -hmm. a progressive Democrat. No doubt. Yeah. But anybody that knows uh, John Bigaman would not, would, I mean, I've had a lot of good conservative friends that say it's amazing because he's a capitalist. Gotcha. So I think she's trying to bring some balance to that inner circle that says, okay, listen, I'm, I'm going to hear from all those progressive sides, but we got to have some voices out there that are going to be pro-business, right, mm -hmm. that are going to tell us, hey, we got to, how does this affect the business side? So I, I think bringing that in, where other governors have done this in the past, and they've brought in someone to be just the pure political hatchet arm and somebody to be perceived as the chief of staff. I think she's actually bringing in, it, it's interesting to say and actually kind of hurtful as a Republican to say this, but she, she seems to be really taking over as the CEO of the state and not just the governor, that right. she's really trying to put together. Right. I mean, I, 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 I got to applaud the fact that, you know, I'm looking at these cabinet positions. Look, I'm sure 100% of these people, I'm not going to agree with 90% of their politics, but, you know, there was all this talk during the campaign that she was going to retread the Richardson administration. Mm -hmm. She hadn't done that. There's a lot of young people. Yeah. There's a lot of people she's let, reaching let me, for. Let me get to one other uh, appointment here before we run out of time. Sophie, I want to start mm -hmm. with you. I forgot the fellow's name that's been hired, but the person to do a CYFD. He's so. really interesting. Isn't he, though? So he's an attorney mm -hmm. who's been working with a nonprofit out mm -hmm. of the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, it, you know, as somebody who's been involved in um, nonprofit work here involving foster care system, and I, and I certainly... Um, maintain a real, um, it's part of my heart. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to see somebody who has this experience with the foster care system, who has experience with teenage and homelessness. Mm -hmm. um, these are big issues for us That's here. Right. That's right. And um, so to see that, and then I also find interesting in his background, he's not, a, he's not just a bureaucrat. I mean, he's raised major funds. Right. Now that's not going to be, district he's that's from. not going to be, I think that the element here, but, right. but it, it, suggest things about his um, his entrepreneurial spirit, let's mm -hmm. put it that way, that I, that I think will be interesting to see how that plays out. We've got about 30 seconds left. Touch on that, if you would, the CYFD thing. He's from out of state, and there's been a little heartburn about someone being from out of state, but is this the kind of position maybe that's a benefit to be not caught up in our local oh, yeah. crazy, so, you know? So what uh, Mr. Blaylock has the uh, gotcha. uh, ability to do mm -hmm. is to have that outside perspective. Right. He doesn't have any baggage locally, right. uh, so he can actually go in, and he has a great resume. He has a great background. So, right. you know, I think he, it's a smart choice. Uh, you have, need new people for new ideas. Mm -hmm. Interesting point there. One more. Mm -hmm. And this happens a lot, Christine. You know how this goes when you, a governor comes in. Everyone's asked for their resignation, and this it's just our system. But there's a, been a little bit of heartburn about our director of the National Hispanic Cultural Center. And I'm wondering if, if sometimes it might, continuity might count for something. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes people get something going and you need more than four years to really, or eight years, to really get something really cooking. What's your, what's your thought on that? Well, it's the governor's prerogative in this case yeah. uh, with the, the head of the National Hispanic Cultural Center uh, to name whoever she wants. Right. So you have that. And it's not that unusual when, when uh, uh, certain employees have to hand in their resignations. Sure. Sometimes they get um, rehired. You know, uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, the scuttlebutt from Sophie is that I know the, the scuttlebutt. person, uh, <laughs> that the person we're talking about was going to be leaving anyway. Oh, okay. and, and I think we mm. owe her some kudos for making it a very successful stint uh, yeah. at the leadership Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Go ahead and finish that thought if oh, you get the scoop. I mean, yeah. So, I, I mean, I have a little bit of the scoop. She <laughs> certainly has been very vocal on Facebook. She was prior to um, the announcement that she wouldn't be there. She made her own announcement that she was leaving. Mm -hmm. She made the decision not to reapply for her position. She clearly understood how that all works. And um, she, she has said that she had made the decision that she was ready to move on into other things that excite her. So she's very talented. She, she can do a lot she of things. She is. I think yeah. she's going to do great wherever she Absolutely. goes. And I also think she's put the NHCC in a really good position yep. Yep. in terms of its stability. Absolutely. That's all the time we have for that topic. When we come back to the line table, we'll preview next week's State of the State address and the start of the 2019 legislative session. Plus, a bit later, the panelists also dive into the plastic fight bubbling up again, this time here in Albuquerque.